Welcome back to SnowRunner, guys, and today we are going to be comparing the RSG Forerunner to Red's Top Truck Challenge Bronco, and today we are out on the Top Truck Challenge map that I showed you guys recently as well, and we're going to be running through a few different challenges with both of these rigs, and I felt like, I felt like it was actually a really, really good comparison because these trucks are both, ooh, I do not want to do that. I want to switch. So these trucks are both very, very, very purpose-built, right? These trucks are both built to go off-road, and I, I keep saying trucks, but technically, I mean, they're crawlers. So they are both purpose-built to go into the wilderness, climb over obstacles, and really not let much of anything stand in their way. And the way we're going to do this is we are going to run the first one through an obstacle, park it, and then grab the other one and run it through that obstacle as well. And we're going to do that for a few different obstacles. And then I want you guys to let me know in the comments section below which one you would rather spend a day with at the trails or at your favorite off-road park. So we are going to start in the Bronco, actually, and we're going to fire it up and head to our first obstacle. Now, as you guys saw in my in my video where I specifically highlighted the Forerunner, I made sure to go through this obstacle the other way. Now, when I showed this map with the Bronco, I actually went through this obstacle the wrong way. Now, God, the second we enter this obstacle, this thing is already twisting up like mad. Now, granted, we haven't even put it into low yet. I mean, we're just doing half throttle in automatic mode in first gear. And it's going along super well. All we have to do is focus on just barely giving it a little bit more gas if we want it to climb over something. I mean, it is genuinely that easy to climb over things in this vehicle. Like, literally, the, the width of the thing and the tires... Not only are the tires extremely wide, but the axles are extremely wide too. So when you're dealing with axles that are this wide and tires that are this wide, it's hard to let much of anything stand in your way. And it also hasn't really shown any sort of difficulty or hangups in any of these obstacles so far. Now, this obstacle might give it a little bit of an issue, but we'll see as we go through it. Let's see, are you going to be at all tripped up by this? Trying to keep it twisty. Ooh, actually, it was a little upset at me for doing it that way. There we go. There we go. A little bit better. So we had to reverse one time, but not too badly. I mean, in all the other sections, it was fine. And then it got to the log slash mud section, and it was a little iffy, but that's because I lined it up the wrong way. So I'm going to go ahead and stop it right there. And now we are going to grab the RSG Forerunner and give the same set of obstacles a go. And we're going to drive it in automatic mode as well, just to kind of keep things a little bit more fair. Now, obviously, the Bronco does have wider tires and wider axles, but that could actually play out to the advantage of the Forerunner this go around. So as you can see, this one does fit between the obstacles just a little bit better. However, it's also a little longer, and that definitely means that there's going to be a little bit more shuffling the vehicle around position-wise. There you go. If you could just squeeze it between those rocks, you'll be all right. A little bit of damage there coming down. Drop the bumper down pretty hard. Yeah, there's definitely a lot more to scrape on this thing because, again, with the Bronco, we have those extremely wide axles and tires that sort of serve as a bit of a buffer between the rocks and the vehicle. So, this thing made it through, and it made it through pretty well, but it did make it through with a bit more damage. So, and damage-wise, I mean, I'm not really using that as a big metric for this comparison. Um, it's more of a... more of a subjective thing, but at the same time, how did I... Which one did I prefer the driving style of? Probably the Bronco for that obstacle. Now, the second part of the obstacle, this thing did fine. Let's see how it does over these logs. We didn't actually have to reverse this one, whereas we had to reverse the Bronco. So, interestingly enough, both of these vehicles had to reverse once, but in different spots. The Bronco had to reverse over the logs... And the Forerunner had to reverse in the rocks. So let's go ahead and repair and refuel that. Stop engine, swap over to the Bronco. Repair and refuel the Bronco as well. We're going to do that after each obstacle just to kind of have a clean slate to start with every time. 
Now, I'm gonna go ahead and take these to another obstacle and we'll see how they perform there. Now, what's really cool about this map is that it makes it very easy to compare a vehicle's abilities to another vehicle literally side by side with like no issues or difficulties at all, especially if you're trying to figure out which one is the better crawler. It's definitely going to be a going to be an easy comparison. And also, I am going to just really quickly pull this ANK back down to the bottom of the hill. I'm sure it won't be hard, just because I want to reset this for the, uh, oh god, for the pulling part of the test. I was like, please tell me we have a front winch point, please. Now granted, this is not the pulling part of the test, because you could do this with like, two horsepower. I mean, you got gravity on your side. And thankfully, it looks like the AI is going to use the brakes and use the steering of that truck just to kind of help keep it straight. So we're not going to get it out of the ruts. We're not going to get it off course. It's not going to be put into some weird position or thrown into some tree somewhere. So that's always a nice thing. But let's pull it down to the starting cones, which is almost there. And after we do the next crawling obstacle, we will come back and mess with that with both of these rigs. So let's go to the next crawling obstacle which is down in here. Now, this crawling obstacle is, uh, this crawling obstacle is a bit wild. It's a bit wild, and it's definitely a bit more wild than the, uh, than the other crawling obstacle that we just did. Now, there's a lot more loose rocks in this one, so let's see what she's got in three, two, one, go! And then after we run the Bronco through here, we are going to compare it to the Forerunner. Ooh! Modulating the throttle. Or not. Wow. I'm only using like quarter throttle right now. I'm trying to in, like sort of imitate what low one would do. But at the same time, I also want to be able to get on the throttle quickly and get that higher wheel speed if I want it or need it. So that's why I'm leaving it in auto first gear. And this thing actually works very well in auto first gear. Like, it was designed to work very well in auto first gear. Like, if you never use this thing in auto mode, you're actually kind of, like, you're not doing yourself any favors because you really should experience this thing in auto mode, like, if you have access to it. Easing her through. Thing does very well through the loose rocks. The grip is good. It never really feels like you're having to give up on much. Although, I have taken this thing through here before and so I kind of had an idea and you guys probably also had an idea of what it was going to be like whereas the Forerunner I have never taken through here so the Forerunner will be a totally new experience for me going through this obstacle up and over the end come on plunging into the mud and water at the very end easing my way out not bad not bad at all. All right. Now, we knew the Bronco would do a good job through there, but I am more curious to see what the RSG 4Runner does through there, especially considering the fact that we have never attempted that obstacle in this vehicle before. We've done this one, and we've done several other trails on this map, but that particular obstacle is one that we have never done. Had to go ahead and um, swap over the timing a little bit, but anyways, guys, yeah, this is going to be a very interesting very interesting one to see now obviously our tires are a little bit more narrow and so are our axles so that could either help us or hinder us depending on which lines we choose to take now the line choice is definitely going to make a big impact here so i got to be careful to not get a little bit too overzealous with the lines i choose so let's go ahead and get lined up three two one let's go All right, easy does it. Trying to walk my way through these obstacles first off. Oh, got it twisted into an area that it didn't like. An area that it really didn't like. Let me see if I can kind of make it, make it over to the left. There it is. That's not bad. That's not bad. I'm okay with that. I am a-okay with how that did right there. Oh, boy. We're definitely getting a little bit more high-centered, though, on some of these big boulders, and that could impact us negatively going forward. But, again, line choice is everything right now. 
I'm not gonna lie though, I'm definitely a little bit more nervous taking this thing through here than I was taking the Bronco through here because this one, I mean, it's very, very good. Don't get me wrong. It's very, very good. But you do have a little bit of that weird sense of if I mess up, I could get really stranded in here. Really stranded and really stuck really quickly. Maybe we should have gone to the right. Let's try going to the right. Aha! Bump of the clutch and shifting it up to second actually gave us the little bit of oomph we needed. Ooh, buried the front bumper there, though, and that got us some damage that we do not want. Come on. Yeah, you definitely have to work it a little bit harder going through here in this thing. It's tricky. It's really tricky. There you go. Oh, no. I was trying to get it to kick into second gear. Sometimes you can get it, and sometimes you can't. We've moved the rocks around a little bit, though, and we might be able to use that to our advantage. Oh, there it is. Just had to look at that, look at that position of the front axle. Phased right through that rock there. You can tell it's not a CDT axle rig, that's for sure. Easy. Man, doing this with a CDT axle rig would be hardcore. Oh, oh, oh. All right, stay focused. There's second gear. Oh, that actually helped us a lot. Bumping the clutch and getting us up into second gear helped us a ton going through there. Walking it up over the last set of obstacles and dropping over the side. Plunging into the water. Wow, we fully submerged the hood, but that's all right because we've got our snorkel. It actually handled the mud a little bit better than the Bronco did, but going through there, there was definitely a few moments of like, ooh, I hope this makes it. So with all that being said and done, we're actually going to take this now over to the pulling test and we're going to attempt the pulling test directly after that test now that we've repaired it because we've attempted the pulling test before in the Bronco. And so I wanted to attempt it in this first to sort of set a bit of a baseline and then we'll see how the Bronco measures up to it. Now, honestly, I feel like if you're after that realistic experience, you're going to get it from both of these rigs because really and truly in the real world, the Bronco would be more capable because you are dealing with bigger axles, wider tires, um, slightly taller tires. But this thing is very, very capable as well. And I could very, very easily see someone driving this on the street before driving the Bronco on the street. So that's something to consider as well. So let's see, and I believe we have the mid-range engine in this thing, the mid-grade engine. Let me verify that. So let's see, mid-grade engine, which gives us a, I believe, an S power to weight ratio. Not an S plus, but just an S. So let's go ahead and hook this thing up. All right, towing test in three, two, one. Let's see if you could pull the hill. Holy smokes. Stay in that rut. Come on. Use the momentum. Dude, she's not even going to come out of first gear. Oh, my God. Low plus it is, I guess. This is going to get sketchy the further up we get. Unfortunately, it didn't look like we had an available winch point there at the trailer hitch. So, we had to make do with a bumper tie. But, jeez. That is... That is pretty substantial. I mean, that should go to show you how freaking heavy that ANK is. Like, especially once you take the fuel out of it and you disable the engine. Oh my god, it is heavy. Like, it is heavy as heck. Oh, get back in the ruts, bud. Come on. I guarantee you there's, whoa, there's gonna be people in the comments that are gonna be like, well, if you would put it in low minus, you would have made it. No, not really. Not with this tire slash engine setup. Yeah, not even low minus will get us there. Well, that's where we made it to in the in the forerunner. Let's see if we can let's see if we could finish it in the Bronco. That'll be really interesting to see. If we could finish it in the Bronco, that would be nuts. That'd be wild. Now, the Bronco was able to pull it all the way last time, so I feel like it will. I mean, I feel like it'll definitely make it there. 
I just want to see if it could resume the climb right there on the fly like that. You know what I mean? And normally, I would reset the ANK all the way back to the beginning, but we know from a previous test that we've done in the Bronco, we know that it could tow it all the way. So we don't really need to reset the truck, at least in my opinion. So let's see what we could do now that that ANK is probably about halfway up. Well, it's a little bit more than halfway up. It was a good performance out of the Forerunner, that's for sure. All right, Bronco, let's see what you got. Dude! Different experience right there. Oh my god. Oh, it really, actually, it grinded to a halt there for a second. Working the wheel to see if I could find any extra grip at that front end. Ooh, there it is. There's that grip. There's that grip. Find it. Find it. Find it. Find it. Oh, it's, it's slipping. It's slipping. It doesn't have the momentum. Oh, there it is. Come on! Come on! Yes! Yes, yes, yes! Go, 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 go! Almost to those cones and across the line. We're about to have the ANK across the line as well, and boom! So, in, like, just to summarize some of these tests, like, I feel like... The verdict we've ended up with, at least the verdict I've ended up with, is that the Bronco is the one... Like, okay, first of all, they're both great. The Bronco and the Forerunner, they're both great. The Bronco is the one I'd rather drive on the trail. The Forerunner is the one I'd rather drive home from the trail, if that makes any sense. Because the Bronco would probably have to go home on a trailer, whereas... You could ride the trails all day in the Forerunner and then hop in, turn on your music, turn on your AC, and you'd be good to go, get back on the highway and drive home. So with that being said, I would love to know your thoughts and opinions on this comparison in the comment section down below. If you have any trucks that you would like to see compared on this map, do please leave those suggestions down there in the comments as well. And if you're new to the channel and you would like to see more, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, turn on those notifications, and I'll see you guys next time.